Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Uh, would you like to run the Southern Division? I'm, uh, I've been in the military. And, uh, yeah. You didn't ask him how much he got paid. No, no, okay. Oh, you got to be down there this afternoon. You used to be able to fly from LAX to San Diego Airport for $11.60 on PSA Air, uh, Airlines. PSA. eleven sixty, one One way. And so I'm going to graduate school. I'm down there. And I'm going back every Tuesday and Thursday, commuting back. And then I was commuting back to attend my classes. And then after doing this about three or four months, fuck. Uh, and, I mean, it gets old. Um, and so I, I show up uh, Friday uh, afternoon. Uh, and I said, uh, we had a sales meeting. And if you want to piss off employees, you have a general stroke sales meeting Friday afternoon, 530. So you send a message. You're doing a shot across the bow. There's a new sheriff in town. So I jump up on a table like this. We had about 250 employees, more or less. And somebody was uh, stealing. We didn't know. The big bosses didn't know who was stealing. But somebody was stealing. Uh, we had boiler rooms, which is now called call centers. Boiler rooms. Okay? And when you got three or 400 guys and gals in a boiler room, and uh, the, uh, you don't ask if they're sales. You ask how many sales you made. And our sales uh, weren't what they should be based on three or 400 people making a gazillion calls. So uh, we had the meeting. And I said, the good news is uh, I'm the new boss. The bad news is I'm the new boss and you're all fired. All. 100%. Screaming and yelling. And you know, a woman comes up to me and says she's breastfeeding. Uh, and nobody breastfeeds. I mean, nobody in 1971 breastfed in a fucking office. So how am I going to feed my baby? I said, that's your fucking, you should have kept your legs closed, sweet pea. And I said, if you want a check, a final check, I was easier then. Uh, you clear out your desk by seven and the paperwork. And then there was a little chunky girl. Hey, you, what's your name? Carol. Your new name is Pins. Because your calves look like bowling pins. You keep your job. Stay here. Follow up with all these. This trash. And then I hired, went and hired 13 Top Gun pilots as they got out Monday when they got out of the, being uh, discharged from the uh, Air Force, Top Gun. Uh, had no training. I figured, well, if, they, if, if they're Top Gun pilots and uh, they, you know, they live through all that shit, then they, uh, you know, I can train them. I was wrong about that because I didn't realize that a lot of the military are dense. Um, and it took me uh, 12, 13 weeks to train the first guy. His name was Claremont. I called him Clarahan. Like the, the, there was a program on TV with a big clown and a big red nose and big ears and uh, to make the first sale. But when he made the first sale, then the other guys fell into line and we were, uh, I mean, just shitting money. And, and, and we built up a... Uh, uh, a uh, uh, boiler room, which is you'd call a call center, and I used to sit up and um, masking tape. In the old days, you had a phone. I used to take the phone. I said, "What hand do you wipe your ass with, kid?" Take the phone, and I'd masking tape it to your hand. And uh, if I didn't see the masking tape glittering from the lights, boom! Like a flash, I'm down on him. You want this job, kid? You need the fucking money. And they had to, to go to the bathroom. They had to unconnect, right? You didn't unconnect unless you had permission. I had the leading, you would call a call center, boiler room in the fucking United States of America by a factor of almost 10. When this call center that the SMP built here a number of years ago and it went bust the first time and the second time, they came to me. Not because of those days, but, but Sally and I have run big call centers with the kids here. Back when they were youth, in the, their youth. And it, oh, he's not there, but she's there. Back in her youth. And uh, so there's certain things. Uh, and you, when you run a big call center, they got a million excuses why they didn't make uh, the sales. All of which is they didn't make enough calls. Okay, it's a numbers game. 
uh, they have a script just like you're going to get. In fact, part of your scripts are based on call center scripts that I used 20 years ago. Why do we use them? Because they work. Whether you're Asian, black, blue, or purple, you, and you always got a reason why you didn't, or but. But if you demand excellence, you demand, it's just like the guy said, peanut, young boy like you ought to be able to close 100%. You set, you, you've led a life of setting low expectations, or your, and or your parents set low expectations, or now that you've been here, you might have thought they were high expectations, but they weren't. Because if expectations didn't lead to generational wealth, by QLA definition, they were low. And generational wealth is wealth that you build between, some people say 20 years is a generation, some people say 25 years. This is called 20. We're doing it three years. If you're uh, uh, retarded, asthmatic, syphilitic, seven years. And you've seen these guys. I don't know if any of the guys have syphilis or not. But syphilis doesn't affect your speech. It affects your motor neurons towards the end, I'm told. But see, you, you want to be liked by these cocksuckers. What does it matter what they think of you? What? It matters to you. Matters to your parents. And you're a product, unfortunately. Didn't matter to Steve Jobs, did it? Didn't matter to uh, the tennis guy. So everybody, not everybody, this is an exaggeration, but everybody, for, for the metaphor, everybody that's successful doesn't care, and you do. So it's a dichotomy, or it's a conundrum, as I used to say. I'm not sure what conundrum means, but I know it's a popular word. It's a conundrum. How bad do you want to be liked versus how bad do you want to be wealthy, generational wealthy? It's your choice. It's the fucking meathead's choice. You already made a choice by being here, spending by, you know, it's, uh, some... Uh, thought process, a bunch of money, uh, but um, I, the, uh, one of my favorite examples is, I've only been asked one time in 29 years, how many times am I going to turn my 25 or 30 grand into, how many times am I going to get it back from the success out of your seminar? I've only been asked that one time, it was about four or five years ago, and that guy turned it into 70 million in seven months. I'm glad he asked me. I was kind of pissed the first time he asked me, you know. And you're going to hear him tomorrow. Now, I don't know what that return is, because for him it was about 30 grand. It's more now, but I don't know, I don't know how many 30 grand goes into 70 million, but a few. In seven months, annualized and all the bullshit. It's a pretty hefty return. Anything else on the contract? Hiring people? Okay, it's not the people you fire that kill your business. It's the people you don't fire that kill your business. Yes, sir, in the back. The other couple states that you said weren't good? <laughs> oh, uh, well, oh, uh, no, th th that are harder. New Jersey, Connecticut, what? California, uh, New York, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. Those are the worst. The, the best, the easiest, Florida, Texas, Nevada, the states that you don't pay income, a state income tax, basically. Wyoming. Yeah, North Carolina's good. Um, but, I mean, w when you hire them this way, you don't, have to, you don't have to worry. You'll still worry because of who you are, but, I mean, you don't have to worry. Anything else about hiring and firing? And, you know, uh, you need somebody. And normally the person that is the hatchet person, like I've been called since 1977, 
is the person that heads this up. And when you fire somebody, at least one witness, preferably a lawyer and a witness, and you film it. And I've yet, in all the years I've been doing this, to have one employee that I filmed take me to court. Not one. Because then they can't lie what they said. And more importantly, they can't lie what you said. And they do and will lie. The average unintelligent uh, monkey that you're dealing with doesn't understand when the, ju when the, um, the judge says, do you understand uh, perjury? Do you understand you know, uh, lying under oath? They don't. Because they were illiterate pig fuckers. Somebody's hand was up. Yes, sir. So the, the firing that the, the, the you just described with the witness and the taping it, that's for the people that you've hired past the contracts. Because the contracts, you really don't need. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, you don't. You, you, that's absolutely correct. Uh, you, uh, during that contract period, that one and five month period, you don't need because you can just throw them out of the door, set them on fire, and beat them to death out the, outside the door. That's an exaggeration. Yeah. Could you, implement, uh, could you implement that in, like, Andrea's company? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter where it is. I mean, virtually, now, you, you, hire, you buy a company and you got employees now. It's a different story. So you've got to set the tone. You've got to be harsh, accountable. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, most people, you know, uh, if the business hours are 8 to 5, uh, uh, and, and, you, and you stand, I mean, the employees aren't coming in at 8. You know, 5% of the employees will come in at 7, because that's how they were raised. You know, it's like our kids, first there, last to leave. Well, I mean, that's, that hardly happens anymore. Uh, but then you have to go through a process now, the way that I like to do is, as a new sheriff in town, we're going to all sign new contracts. la di da you know? And then the new contracts are, but you can't force them to sign the new contract. You can't force them to, to uh, undo the old contract. You, you know, although, like he said, he fired the bitch, fuck you, take me to court. Those were his exact words. And to go to court, of course, they can get labor lawyers and uh, pro bono lawyers. But normally, when you go to court, and, uh, and these things cost, uh, take two, three weeks, they're not, nobody's paying them a salary. So they don't have money to go to court. Yeah. Even, even if it's an asset acquisition, don't you, can't you do a new contract? Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah, but, yeah but normally, part of the deal, you're going to want some of the employees to stay. So you have less leverage. So you, I, I, no, remember I said that I don't believe in legacy knowledge. So I don't give a fuck if they're there 55 years and they built the build, uh, uh, business from the first nail in the first board. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, set with me. I don't give a shit. There's no legacy. Because too many people that, remember, you've got 20 years experience, one year, 20 times. And 95% of the employees that you're going to acquire that have 30 years experience have 30 years one t year, 30 times. Now, I was in the diamond cutting business, and there, there is something to do. Well, a diamond cutter that's been there 40 years is almost 100% better than a diamond cutter that's only been there five years. I learned that the hard way, unfortunately, where I got fucked on some diamond deals that uh, in the 40-year diamond cutters know they're important. <laughs> but it's like the programmers today. How, uh, you know, how smart you got to be to be a programmer? Not. Yet, I mean, a lot of the programmers are, you know, pulling at uh, these big companies, you know, Google, et cetera, are, are pulling down significant salaries. Anything else about hiring, firing? Okay, YouTube, thank you.